Should the Lakers sit LeBron at this point? <sighs> Molly, Molly, what's up, Wendy? It's good to see you. Uh, I said this as soon as Anthony Davis went down. What is the actual point? And this, for me, comes in tandem with LeBron James himself saying that he wants to continue to play basketball until he can play alongside his son and make history in that way, which would be pretty cool, but is not going to happen next year. And so, to me, LeBron James has nothing to prove in my mind. Like, I know this is probably not his way, but he has nothing to prove and more to protect. And so, this Lakers team ain't been doing nothing since December. What? Why? Just why? Hmm. So, LeBron has played more minutes this month than he's played in any month in eight years. The last time he played this many minutes per game, he was in his 20s. That is a real warning sign, but it's also an indication how much he still wants this. He, even though their chances of doing anything this season are very slim, this is who he is. He's always wanted to do this. Now, my thing is, even if there's somehow, the seventh seed is gone. There is no way they're getting that. The only thing they're getting is the eighth seed. If they somehow get that, they get the Suns, who are beasts. Beasts! I mean, I don't I mean, I respect LeBron and AD. I just don't see how you're beating them four out of seven. So I'm, if I'm LeBron, I'm weighing. AD's coming back. I never back down. I'm going to keep fighting with. I got a bad ankle and a bad knee on the same side. And I've already played 41 minutes a month, uh, yeah. this whole month, or 40 minutes every game this month. I, it's not a simple arithmetic. Before we jump in here, JJ, is any of it self-serving, though? in terms of passing Carl Malone, personal accolades, his own legacy, even if the Lakers don't go anywhere? I mean, you why call stop it, playing? You could call it self-serving. He could call it being competitive. Okay. I mean, I think... But you, you could, get the gist. I'm talking about his own personal accolades versus the team's success. Yeah, and I do think he's getting joy. I mean, he said last week, I'm having the time of my life. The Lakers are circling the drain, having one of their most disappointing seasons in team history, and he's saying, I'm having the time of my life. That is somebody who is... I mean, again, you'd call it self-serving. Yeah. You could Maybe call not it the best choice of words, but you get where I was going with it. Molly, to that point. Yes, sir. I don't think it's right that we, as the media, are going to get mad at players and teams for load management and resting guys while simultaneously knocking LeBron for wanting to play basketball. Fair. That seems a little unfair to me. Um, I, I don't think he should yeah. sit. I think he should manage this injury as he would any injury, as should AD. Mm -hmm. I think those two guys sh should come back. Frank Vogel said it the other night. They're out of time. And, and these two guys on the basketball court, yes, it gives them a chance to win. Uh, but this team, as I've said all season, has just been so poorly constructed. Uh, I think all this is a moot point. I really do. I think if the Spurs want the 10 seed, they can get the 10 seed. We look at this, the Lakers' schedule the rest of the year. Not sure if these two guys are coming back. Mm -hmm. I think there's a good chance they don't even end up with the 10 seed, even if LeBron plays. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, to me, this is maybe even a moot point. That we, we don't even see I, them in the playing game. I just I think back to when Kobe was trying to get the Lakers into the playoffs, whatever year that was, 2012-13. Yeah. And he's playing like 45 minutes, night after night. And the Laker fans are adulating him as he's trying to drag that team. And he's playing on the sore Achilles. And it wrecked his career. And I'm not saying mm -hmm. I can see him in the future. I'm just saying that when you've seen something like that happen, mm. and I'm telling you he's playing the most minutes he's played in a month in eight years, mm -hmm. it just makes me worry. It's not, an, it's, not a, it's not a commentary on his competitiveness or trying to judge him. It's just being worried. Monica? To that end, Wendy, uh, he's going to be a Laker again next year. So for me, this is more about the long-term play as opposed to this season, which we all acknowledge has not lived up to expectations and is not going to suddenly turn around at this point. In my mind, there's an argument for everybody get healthy. I'm not sure how much can be done in terms of adding pieces or detracting pieces from this roster as it stands. But this year has already been a wash, and he's going to be a Laker again next year. I just, mm, I, I have the utmost respect, but I called for him to chill out a month ago. <laughs>
No, there, there are some comparisons, though, between that Lakers team in 2012, 2013, and this year's Lakers team. Mm -hmm. That was the Steve Nash, Dwight Howard, Kobe Lakers team yeah. that never figured it out. And this team, again, has never figured out. And some of that, of course, is, you know, LeBron's had some injuries. AD has some injuries. But both of these teams have just completely underperformed relative to expectations. Yeah, real quick before we go to break, in terms of construction of this roster, do you think the Lakers should move on from AD next season? No, I don't think they should. And, and LeBron when healthy, is still playing at elite level. AD, when healthy, can still be an all-star level player. They've proven that they can win together. To me, it's all about the ancillary pieces. Mm -hmm. They gave up so much. They gave up so much to get Anthony Davis, whether it was draft picks, rotation level players like Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, who now is an all-star. Then this offseason, they, they, they elect to not re-sign Alex Caruso, and they gave up all their wing depth to get Russell Westbrook. So it's not, to me, it's not about Anthony Davis and LeBron James. It's about all the ancillary pieces around them that just have not been constructed, pro constructed properly. I, this is a I, catch-22. I don't see how they improve this roster dramatically. I don't see how they do it. Uh -huh. um, unless somebody out there says, I want to be a Laker and don't, don't want to make much money. They can't even 100% re-sign Malik Monk. They signed 10 guys, nine of them, Eight and a half of them didn't work out. The one guy that did work out, I don't even know if they can keep him. That's how hamstrung they are. I don't know how they're going to do it. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.